Welcome back. It's easy to see that many of Seattle's neighborhoods are rapidly changing, but one new mixed-use building is preserving the Central District's past while turning an eye toward the future. Here to tell us more, Y. King Garrett from Africatown Community Land Trust and a resident of the building, Jamila Wasson Payan. It's good to have you both here. Thank Thanks you for, for having us, us Margaret. Tell me a little bit about the importance of this building. Well, this building is important for two reasons. One, it, it honors the rich history of the African American community in the Central District of Seattle and the Liberty Bank, uh, original Liberty Bank, which was founded in 1968 as the second uh, black owned bank west of the Mississippi. And it also addresses the affordable housing crisis that's affecting Seattle as the uh, economy changes and not all of our communities have been able to uh, participate right. in that. Right. Well. <laughs> To say the least. So it's a triple win in that way to preserve the history, to have this, you know, this stellar place to live. Jamila, why did you want to live there? Well, I am a second generation. My dad grew up in the neighborhood and then I grew up on Beacon Hill, but I went to Garfield as well. So I have a lot of community ties within. And just being able to come back and see the resurgence of the neighborhood and really have the community. It is a village that takes all of us to raise right. the kids and keep our community strong. So. And talk to me a little bit about how, especially since your dad was there before um, in the area, we think about progress, you know, when new buildings come in, but something is erased every time something is, is put in. And so what seems to me brilliant about what you've done is really kept that in mind. Mm -hmm. What, why is that so important? Well, we all have a history, and when your history continues to be erased with every building that comes down, it's important to keep those markers and identify what's going on. And just having so much of the history that's been put in with the art installations that are in the building that are amazing, with the original founders for the Liberty Bank building, and then you have the local artists that are able to come in and showcase that. It's just community support upon community support. We're looking at some of the beautiful artwork, which is really quite amazing. Why can you talk to me a little bit more about the history of the bank in terms of its lending to the African American community and why that's so important? Sure, uh, it is important because um, access to economic and mobility is, is very important for a community and families, uh, well being, and um, various uh, public and private practices such as uh, redlining. Um, made it, uh, uh, was a major obstacle for communities to be able to access capital to start businesses, to buy homes, to improve homes. And Liberty Bank was founded in 1968 um, to address that, uh, that issue. And uh, my grandfather was one of the co-founders and um, the new building uh, continues to address those issues which still remain today in many ways by providing um, uh, affordable housing, um, affordable commercial space for businesses to stay in the community, continuing the uh, tradition of African-American uh, businesses in the Central District, that rich history, and um, <clears throat> really showing another way forward for mm -hmm. Seattle, another way, you know, we hear a lot about shared prosperity um, and equitable development, and this is a, a project which really makes that uh, right. concrete. You know, Seattle is going to be a world-class, you know, city of the future. It should be inclusive of the communities of the world that have helped make this city. And so this project, I think, uh, is an example as many neighborhoods are struggling with these same issues, um, not only in Seattle, but across the country. You mentioned redlining, which is the, the process, if I understand this correctly, of, of areas being sort of cut away from access to credit and mortgages for that's people correct. of color. So some people might say, okay, well, that's historical and not understand why it's important today, but it affects the generational ability to gather capital and to send kids to school and all of that. So it all rolls forward. It doesn't really go away. It's something that we're still struggling with today. Am I correct about that? Absolutely. Compounding interest can work for you or against you. Yeah, right? exactly. So, um, we're dealing with the compounding effects. Uh, there's uh, new studies that say that uh, African American wealth is going to go to zero by uh, 2050. And so we think it's important to begin to address that so that you know we can have a more uh, equitable uh, society that's important. I think yeah. that you know um, it's not only tech workers that should be able to live in the city. I mean right. other people make con uh, valuable contributions to the economy whether taking care of our children, working in the supermarket, teaching, nursing, you know, and so where, where, where are the people going to live? Will this building, do you think, encourage other black owned businesses and, and other kind of um, I don't know, what is the word, more enlightened looks at how we develop our properties? 
I think, it, again, it's an example of, you know, equitable development. It was made possible by, you know, partnership. It took, you know, community organizations such as Africatown, uh, the Black Community Impact Alliance, Bird Bar Place, and Capitol Hill Housing Affordable Developer. The city played a significant role, um, and many other community members and stakeholders. And so I absolutely think that, you know, one of the important values was making sure that, you know, more people are able to participate in the growth of the economy. And so, um, again, this is a, an example and a, and a model that can be improved upon and uh, replicated. We have other projects in the, in the pipeline, and we really need our, uh, the city, um, our residents, to, to, to get involved with saying, you know, we, we need, you know, 10 more because there is a serious state of emergency around affordable housing in our city. There is indeed. And Thank you very much. I hope you'll come back and tell us about the other projects as they unfold and Thank how you. people can help. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, lighthearted stories about therapy, believe it or not. From a therapist's point of view, national advice columnist Lori Gottlieb has a seat on our couch after this.